All right. Here we go. I'll do the intro. Welcome to another episode of Over Ask. Today, I know I say it's always a special guest, but this is a very, very special guest because Peter, we have Peter Torkin here. He is the boss man of my brokerage in Toronto, the agency. He's the managing partner, owner of the agency Toronto, $1.5 billion in career sales. And uh, he's the man. I, I, I love Peter and I'm happy to have him on. So Peter, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. First of all, I love you. You know, I chased the hell out of you to get you to come to the agency. Yes. And soon we're going to do the same thing with this guy, uh, <laughs> Eric. So I'm going to put him on the spot. I don't think you want me with the agency. But I'll, uh, I'll come out to Toronto and hang with you guys. You, you need one of these shirts. Guys. I like the shirts. The shirts we've are always, cool. We've always said they have the, the coolest merch. Matt, is it is it nerve-wracking interviewing your boss yes this is again this is nerve-wracking like it was uh interviewing Maurizio because you know one wrong move and I'm fucking out the door back Um, at you know I'm going to fucking your checks (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah my checks will be written and I'm done so you know um Peter for those who don't know you I mean I actually we just saw a stat on you you have the most followed real estate account in Toronto on Instagram is that is that True. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So uh, right now I'm sitting at 160 something thousand dollars. It's not not thousand dollars, thousand followers, and um, yeah, it's been a process, but it's been amazing. Uh, it's a lot of deals coming out of Instagram. Social media has been big, I think, for all of us in the industry. For you, for for the broke agent, for Eric. So we we are heavily relying on it since the COVID started, and even before that. And now we are actually getting pushed towards uh, digital advertising in general, in any sort of platform that you can get out there. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big, big social media guy like you guys. He's, you, I mean, you have eight times more followers than Matt, if my calculations are correct. <laughs> so I don't want to give those stats, but you, you're more than free to do. You know, more, <laughs> Just a quick know, little math. More yeah, about yeah the, we we. Out. Yeah, we don't have to go there. We'll cut that out of the uh, we'll cut that out of the episode. But um, Peter, th- it's actually very interesting because you you've seen it all. A lot of people who've been in the business as long as you never get onto social because they just think um, they're just kind of content with what they're doing. So it's cool that you made the shift. You saw that there's a ton of money to be made from social, and you made the shift because what even five years ago it wasn't as big as it is now no, so you were pretty much all door knocking cold call i know you were a cold call machine used to be not yeah. anymore not, but i still encourage all the agents to do every sort of avenue that you can think of the game of real estate not a game the real estate business is not only one avenue i think me and you we talk all the time matt uh, mm-hmm. about having different pillars of income. And I strongly believe that. You can't just rely on one source of income. Either it's going to be social media or your uh, flyer sending out or your direct or your Pascal. If you're just a one-man show, I think fantastic, but you're not going to be uh, making that much money because your lead generation system is poor. You don't have enough business coming to you. And uh, you're basically as good as your last deal. That's what we've been hearing in the business, right? So in terms of social media, absolutely, you're absolutely correct. So I saw the light a few years back and I see a lot of agents are getting forced to it now and they do recognize the power of it, but uh, which I did the same thing. I think we all a few years back saw the, in, in the light on the end of the tunnel and it was pretty impressive. And I can talk about that as well. So, yeah. That's sweet. Um, it's interesting how you got started on social because you started more as like a, a curator page, you were saying. And then now it's it's moved to more personal. But what you were doing before, and I think this is a good idea for a lot of people at first, if they're kind of new to it, you were just pulling content uh, that was already going viral and sharing it to your page. And well, you built a following. Story. If you want to hear the story how I really started it, so I can I can I yeah. can dabble in that a little bit. So maybe shed some light for other people that if they decide to do the same way. So this was back in 2013, I think. 
So in, in the December, everybody was going away. That year I decided to stay in town because of different reasons, family reasons. So <clears throat> I thought to myself, okay, so this is my downtime. I usually take off December 10, 15, I'll take a whole month off and I come back to work January 15. So usually I travel two or three times, but during that period of time, so that year I did it. <clears throat> So I decided, I said, what do I do? So I sat and I really looked at the Instagram and I looked at the social media and I started watching a lot of YouTube. And at that point, I think I had, didn't have that much of a followers, didn't know what to do and how to create it. So like my wife is a testament to that. I've been, I was up until 3, 4 a.m. And I was watching these big accounts and people that are teaching how to do social media and all of that, and talking about algorithm and all of the, and, and how to improve your social media game and get followers and, and engage with people. So it was a lot, it was eye opening. So I did that. So I implemented a lot of different avenues into my account. I started with a curated page, sort of it is curated right now, but I'm, you know, dabbling between my personal life business life and, and curated stuff as well. So really caught my eye in social media was in 2014 when I did a $4 million deal from it. It was just like, what the hell happened? So this lady called me up, said, look, I've been trying to sell my house in King City of all places. I know you do luxury and you're in luxury niche of Toronto. So I want to I wanna sell my house. We can't, it's been one and a half years. Can you come and take a look at it? I said, sure. If you're inviting me, no problem. So me and my wife went over. We looked at the house. Uh, next thing we know, they give us the listing. We listed it and sold it within 22 or 23 days. And they were like static. And that really opened my eyes because that was the first deal back in 2014 out of an Instagram account, which you make all of a sudden, I don't know, 50, 60, $70,000 from, from it. It just... You know, it becomes mind boggling for me and you know, it's doing a $4 million deal. So I really invested back in it. I put some time into it. I grow the page. I get to know some big pages, luxury listings, Insta inspire me home decor and doing a little bit of dabbling and giving shout outs and, and things like that with them as well at the same time. So it really grew by itself naturally after that. And, uh, you know, I, I told you this before, Matt, I've done a 20 some odd million dollar deals from it. And I just recently sent out two uh, clients to uh, Turks and Caicos. I just did the two land deal with our good partners, manager partners of uh, Turks and Caicos office and, and uh, just collecting the commission, We're doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> so it goes to show you what sort of a power social media has. And if you know how to actually work it and, and how to how to engage with people and like much like you do, almost all your business comes from social media. So I know where it's what's going on with that. So that's the little bit of backstory. So uh, for for everybody to, to, to understand and spend some time because it is worth it. I love that you started with the curation angle in 2013, 14, because that's how so many pages started off. I'm, you know, the fat Jewish, fuck Jerry, these like popular meme accounts, daddy issues. There were so many curation pages that people built to build their personal brand. And back when Instagram was kind of first starting or becoming popular in the early 2010s, the curation was great for the algorithm. Like all the memes, all the, you know, popular posts, anything trending was great. But now you're actually transitioning to more personal because you're showing yourself, you're showing your brand more. And because Instagram's algorithm now recognizes that curation is not as effective as shooting your own content. So it's completely flipped, but I'm actually kind of flipping in the opposite direction because I want to curate more content of real estate professionals and real estate creators. So it's cool to see how you built, built the brand like that. It's, that's really, uh, really interesting. Because look, back then, if you remember, uh, uh, you're right, 2010 ish, Anything you posted, you went viral really quickly because yep. there was not enough content. Instagram was just bought by Facebook, so they they were they, they were prob the pages were growing exponentially. So uh, it, it, all you needed was a clean feed. You if if you put some content that catches the eye, and and you had to be of course very niche 
sensitive, make sure that you're targeting the specific audience that you have. That's what I did. So I said, you know what? I'm going into luxury. I'm a luxury real estate agent. So mine as well cater things that has to do with homes, not necessarily just all the, uh, the look at all, all my listing, look at this listing, look at that. No, I, I really switched it up. I brought up so many uh, 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 interesting stuff like faucets and, 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 and different looks of things like closets and how to organize it. So it became into interior design and uh, luxury homes. And so I dabbled in all of those stuff and I introduced myself alongside with it. So me and my wife, so we, our page used to call, we called uh, Peter page, it's still called Peter page. So um, that was really interesting to people to see, okay, so there's a real estate aspect to it, there's a design aspect to it, and there is actual human being aspect to it. So what you're doing, you're absolutely doing it right. I think that this will increase somebody's uh, potential for the page and grab more audience from different aspects uh, that people like to see you know, in day-to-day business. Yeah. Uh, to That's business. Al- also a great angle is you don't have to use your own listings like you just said. So, you know, pulling from home decor and luxury listings and you also use really engaging captions. You ask the audience to rate stuff on a scale from one to 10 or you ask an, an engaging question like do you, like comparison questions. So you're telling them what to do in the caption which is great for engagement. So, I mean, you you watching those YouTube videos and studying that, it's it shows that it's been super effective. Yeah, up until 4 a.m. watching them, yeah, yeah. it absolutely shows. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so cool, too, because Eric and I, we always hear people saying, you know, they like the content, but they can't create creative content or good content because they're not funny or whatever. But what you've done, Eric has been telling realtors to do this forever, and I know you've been doing it for a long time. You literally go to your listing. I mean, you have a lot of high end listings to begin with, so you can go to your own listings and you just walk through the house with your phone and you just put a catchy song to it. Usually you put a trending song to it. You either slow it, slow it down or speed it up to fit it into a reel. And I mean, you had 9 million views on one of your reels from doing, you literally walked through one of your listings to a trending song. You had nine just bring us through how that happened. So you you went, you walked through, and then it just kept growing. What happened? <laughs> so uh, it's very interesting, Matt, what you just said. So Real just came out this year, I believe, if I'm not making a mistake. Yeah. August, I think. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it's not that too long. So anything that usually an app or social media app that introduces at the beginning they put an extreme emphasis behind it. They, they change their algorithm because they want to showcase the new, um, uh, new, new feature that they have right now, right? So, and what's the, what's the end game of a social media platform? Anything, doesn't matter. It's to keep the audience on that platform for as long as possible. Why? Because they can push the advertising they're getting, that's how they make money. So the more eyeball and the more consistently people are on that uh, platform, I figured the better it is for them. So that's what they push those those features that they bring on at the uh, right at the beginning. They did that with the IGTV, if you can remember, they, they, they did that with the story, they, all, they're doing it all the time. So really it comes out, I, I, I did the same thing. So I figured, let me ju- just do a quick walk through that listing we just sold, the devil and we were excited. We sold less than five days and I was walking through it and I speed it up and, and, and I'm now I'm seeing everybody doing the same thing that they speeding up the videos because it was only 15 seconds. So, <laughs> so yeah. I did a little bit of editing and that thing went viral. You're right. You got uh, me and you, we were texting back and forth. We got the stats. I was freaking was out. Like, I, was, I was freaking out. <laughs> so because this thing went berserk, 7,000 comments, like nine, nine point something million views. And I think I got about what, 10 to 15,000 followers. Uh, <laughs> out of it, out of it. it was just insane. Like every time I was sending it to you, remember? Yeah. So every time I refreshed, 100 followers. <laughs> it was just insane. Never experienced that before. So, um, but here is the downside that people don't, I don't think they know that. So when, in, as soon as the Instagram sees a content go viral, I've noticed this before, uh, they, uh, they pull your engagements afterwards. 
So they, 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 first of all, they think you're buying it because not, nobody gets 15,000 followers in three days, for example, so because it's very, it's crazy. And so I notice that engagement drops and they don't push the rest of your content afterwards as much as they did for that specific post. So as much as I loved it, <laughs> I gained a humongous followers. I also hated it because I love as steady as she goes, right? You know, you get three, two, five thousand followers every month. It's as steady as she goes. But when you go like that, they put a stop to it. I don't know if you guys noticed that or not. Yeah, it could be frustrating if you post something that gets incredible engagement and then you're constantly chasing the, those amount of views or those amount of comments with every post after. Yeah, um, I have noticed that a little bit too, that after I post something that gets a ton of engagement that the next couple of days or next couple of posts, it's a little bit suppressed. I don't know if that's the algorithm or just the content isn't as good. So Instagram's recognizing like this piece did so well, this one's not gonna perform as well. So they're not showing it in other people's feed just because of that direct contrast between the last post. But I mean, nine, nine million views, that's crazy. That's, we've never achieved that. That's now. like, I'm that's jealous. Like- Justin Bieber status. Yeah. I mean, what the hell? Where do you go from there? Now you have to beat, you have to get 10 million. Yeah, no, I don't think, we'll see if we can beat that because I posted that same video again and again. He's not getting the same engagement that he did before. <laughs> okay. so, come Just on, keep posting let's, it. Let's go. Another 10. Let's see it. Maybe that's what's suppressing your algorithm. Is you're just <laughs> yeah, posting the same thing over and over. Are, are you posting these videos to TikTok also? Or are you filming natively on TikTok? So, or what's your strategy there? At the beginning of the year, I, I speak to Matt all the time. Yeah. I, I think he's a creative genius. and uh, I want to go that far. But. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 after you of course Eric. yes thank you but, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I i i usually run run contests by him we at the beginning of the year we, we chatted a lot to how to go and dabble in different avenues so tiktok for as soon as the app uh, was introduced, I can't remember when it was, I've been on it and my kids were making fun of me. Dad, this is for the teenagers. Why are you on it? And I kept laughing. I said, listen, those, te- those teenagers have parents. So yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and all they have to do is get, dad, look how gorgeous this house is. You know what I mean? So, um, and, and I didn't give up. So I posted, stop, posted, stop. So I, I gained like 30,000 followers or something on on it and, and, and I, if I, I know if I'm consistent enough, I can, you know, the followers would increase. It's just a question of timing. But to, to your take is, we, I, I, I got excited, I called Matt. I said, look, some lady messaged me. She said, I want you to come and appraise our house for a listing, $4 million house. So I said, okay, where did you find me? They find me on, we saw you on TikTok. Holy crap. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I called Matt freaking out. Matt, first lead from the TikTok. <laughs> and it was the daughter who showed their parents, right? That was exactly what you said. That's exactly what it was. So goes to show you never underestimate the potential of reach, right? So who that people could see, could approach and and where the lead's gonna come from. So well, that's that's I I don't I, I recommend people not to give up on these things. So it, the, the problem that we are having, all of us are not consistent enough, mm-hmm. uh, including myself, you know, they, 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 it's, it's time consuming, right? And uh, plus I get a call, Matt, every day, did you upload your trade? Did you upload your paperwork? <laughs> no, I got to chase him constantly. And he still hasn't done it, by the way. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's talking to me all day. It's a real, it's a real issue. I have a real issue with like submitting the paperwork. Uh, I'm getting better. Peter's on me though. That was a getting joke. So anyways, <laughs> it's creating content is the issue, right? That's that's why uh, a lot of you know creative accounts or curated accounts are much better because you can always bring posts and grab content from other sources as long as you give credit to those sources. I think that's that's everybody wins, right? You get followers and they get followers as well. Can you so. curate content on TikTok? I, I know that TikTok at the beginning, I tried to post a couple videos that weren't organic, meaning I wasn't involved in the video and I wasn't filming it on the app. I was basically just reposting my video memes from Instagram reels or from Instagram onto TikTok. And those would get like a hundred views. And then if I film myself, I'd get, you know, 10,000 so TikTok is different, Eric. TikTok, yes. it's a raw, 
it's very, very raw. Uh, it doesn't need to be curated at all. Uh, I think it's, it, it's more of an audience of uh, raw videos, you're absolutely right. So if, if I wanted to curate it, something over there, it's not gonna get as much as engagement as uh, some duet or some stitches mm -hmm. that do between the, the videos, by example. And I think the attention spam of people that are on TikTok because of the average age is extremely low. You know what I mean? They're, they're going like this, like every two seconds. Right, so unless they something at the beginning of that video catches their eye, they're not going to watch it. So that's what I've been noticing. I think you're absolutely right. Raw videos, it's it's a lot more attractive than than if you grab something else and just post it randomly. Yeah, it's annoying. I I keep trying to do different shit on there, and I can't I can't figure it out. Um, <laughs> it pisses me off. Some too. some creative genius, huh? This guy can't even figure out TikTok. <laughs> well, I don't get why it doesn't do well on TikTok at all. It's, it's insane. So, uh, it's it's really Plus bad. Consistently, so, Peter. So you you've been in the business a while, and what's interesting about you is you had a ton of success on a team, and b prior to you know by having the agency, you were on a team, and you were like the main you were like the main guy on the, you weren't the team lead, but you were like the go-to guy mm -hmm. and you had a ton of success and you were there for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think that's interesting because some people like to be on a team and they think maybe they can't make a great living being on a team with a certain split or whatever. So how was that? And uh, can you just walk us through kind of, I guess the, oh, the okay. earlier as, uh, for brand new agents, I always recommend joining a team first. Lot, as, unless you have a sales background in your bar, bone in your body, that you know what you're doing and you are capable of managing your own time and how to generate business, then go on your own by all means. But as a brand new agent, when, when they come in and you come into the business, I think best would be to join a team that will, because the smaller teams are not brokerage. Brokerages are huge. They have too many agents. They don't have time. The brokers and the managers, yes, they put in uh, so many different um, classes for you to learn what to do and how to do it and all of that. And, but it's not a very pressured environment between one-on-one -on -one basis, right? So if you paid attention, Matt, the, the reason that I don't bring a lot of agents in because you and me, we get one-on-one -on -one times. That's, that's, that's something that I, if, I, if you had 200 agents right now, you will not gonna have. Yeah. You know I mean? So that's why the beauty of the agency. Yeah. You, you wouldn't know? be texting me about your 9 million views on the reel <laughs> if you had 200 agents. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a team, um, yeah. So when I started, uh, I was talking to Paul that you know. Yeah. Uh, when I started my career 16 years ago, 15 years ago, um, things were different back then, right? I was I was one of the top agents in Canada, regardless, because I've been in the sales for almost 30 years. So um, my first year, I did. Uh, over half a million dollars in commission. That was my first year in the business. So uh, then, then things just skyrocketed. So when I joined the team, uh, it was a win-win situation for both of us, for my, my old partner. Uh, we became partner afterwards um, because he was working in a very luxury and high-end market and I was a go-getter. So it, 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 it really matched our personality. I, I, I opened a lot of doors, we went in and we closed them together. So over a billion dollar with him and, uh, and then time for me to move on and share the knowledge, share the information and share the hustle that I did for all these years with everybody in, in our team, right? With the agency in Toronto. So, and, and I'm just loving that. So uh, now I'm, with you guys, hopefully we can share that knowledge for more audience out there for as long as they get increased one or two things that they do differently uh, and improve their business. I'm happy with that. Right. So what was your thought process? Because you could have just went on your own to any brokerage and, you know, you didn't have to own a brokerage. You could have just went to any brokerage and been successful. Why? did you go what happened with the agency why did you buy into it now you're an owner like why yeah why'd you 
want to become an owner other than just, you know, just do your sales in another brokerage? Biggest reason was my wife. Number one <laughs> was age. So that's the that's that's the biggest reason. But but beside that reason, uh, I was extremely comfortable where I was, just pulling in 120, 150 million dollars in sales every year on my own. Didn't need to go and create a headache, as I said before. So, but but uh, it becomes two different aspects. One, um, there is a time for everything, in my opinion. I hate hitting plateaus. That's my personality. I cannot have a ceiling. Once I hit that ceiling, then I look for next. So I was hitting the ceiling that, that, that uh, with, with, with my previous team and uh, I was run, supposed to run the business, but it, it was very different. Uh, I wanted to run our own show with my wife's encouragement, of course. So we came across the agency brand with, through a close friend of mine, Luxury Listing Combis, who's the owner of the, the page with Sina, and they introduced me to Mauricio. Within two weeks, we were chatting with Mauricio, and within a month later, I was in LA with my wife, <laughs> looking at the brokerage and seeing how it is and how it's operating, what, what's so different about it, and we don't, we don't have it here, and, and did a little bit of uh, the due diligence in terms of what is the agency about until we got there and it was absolutely breathtaking it was you know, eye-opening because in toronto um you know matt the brokerages are stuck in 1970s oh yeah they're stuck so, in the mud here you know I mean? yeah. so um that's why one of the reasons eric needs to move to an agency too <laughs> move to toronto <laughs> yeah just move to toronto so, the agency, easy one of them. So, so, so that was one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to bring something fresh, something new, something that can increase life for everybody. It takes them to the next level on their career and having fun while doing it. You know, whatever, what's the point of competing everybody in the brokerages and beating the hell out of each other? And I made fun of this and you will remember this, Matt. I said, how does it feel when you, Eric, let me ask you this too. How does it feel for you guys to print if you're in the office, imagine? You print a listing paper of yours in the copy machine and you have to run and grab it so nobody else comes and steal your <laughs> address. So yeah, seriously. On the door. Bunch you know of savages. I mean? Or the it's printer just doesn't right? work. <laughs> exactly. Just losing yeah. your mind. That's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> So, so that environment, it's a competitive environment. It's a terrible environment. It's good to have competition, but a healthy one. It's good to look up to something for the next plateau. But it's, we don't have that in Toronto. We didn't. We, we, no. we still don't within the brokerages because everybody's out there to get whatever you know they can. Yeah, I mean, and we're it's doing really well. We've we've expanded to. Well, we came to Toronto. We're in Vic, uh, Victoria, and. Um, where are we? Uh, Kitchener. We're like expanding pretty fast. I think we're making our name known. Absolutely. Eric, oh, your way. Where the agency is one of the, like, when you think of real estate, you think of like the agency and a couple others, right? Like, seriously. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely a top brokerage here. Yeah. A top, top brokerage. And that's what it's going to be. Yeah. With, with uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> when i think real so estate know. i think the agency is that what you were trying to get me to <laughs> yes that? exactly i, I want to do it in a more sure. polite way because you're not you're not with the agency but you've told me before where so you i like are. the logo that's all i've said matt no but where you are it's like yeah you know it's, they're it's one a of prestigious the prestigious brokerage for yeah, sure yeah. absolutely like the, the best yeah yeah yeah, you said that, right? It was like the best. Yeah, I said that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I didn't say cool. it's the best. Said, okay. <laughs> I don't work with the agency. It's a great brokerage. Every every agent I know at the agency crushes. Yeah, you like them. Yeah. But man, it's not for super everybody. attractive. You know what I mean? You can't put Eric on the <laughs> Yeah, he thinks he says we have the most attractive <laughs> brokerage. No, listen, it's not for everybody. Maybe he, maybe he doesn't want to go to the next. Hey, look, I'm a podcaster now. Okay, I don't, I'm a I'm a content curator. <laughs> This isn't about Eric. You know. Are you regretting this right now? <laughs> no, well, it's it's interesting because Eric's actually he's gone to a point with his brand that he's going to be leaving real estate soon. Yeah, he's like, I've yeah. mentally left at this point. <laughs> yeah. But he's right, Eric. You're like this year. You're gonna be yes. gone. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess at this point you could say I almost am. 
<laughs> yeah. Keeping the so. guy out of the business. Why are you doing that? <laughs> no, he's been talking about it. This is like his his goal. Yeah, my goal is real estate. My goal is to, to grow out. this to a, a media brand that I could monetize this and oh, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. be the number one entertainment platform for real estate agents so they could laugh and you know eventually get educated. That's fantastic. Yeah. Go, 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 go. I love that. Yeah, it's pretty That's sweet. Perfect. It's pretty That's sweet. Perfect. So you were in, you've been in sales for 30 years, almost like yes, not... 1994. Okay. So you were with Sony, correct? Oh, so many different companies. I, I, oh, okay. I, I, it's uh, Sony was Sony corporation uh, was the last one. I was their number one sales guy in Canada. So uh, yeah. So <laughs> it's, it, it's a years in process, my friend. So I was, I was one of the number one sales guys at Sunglass Hut. <laughs> so if you, if you need free sunglasses or 50 percent off i still get it my my picture's on the wall still it's a plaque it's incredible i did sixty thousand dollars worth of sunglass sales in five months there you go incredible i, was I told me i was with future shop i don't know if you remember future shop oh of course i used to yeah. go in and play so, all the uh the right. game me and steve used to work for future shop as well so steve Bailey was uh, i don't know what you know what future shop is eric uh, it, like a circuit city store. massive yeah yeah, yeah yeah so massive electronic store so this is way in 1997 uh, to 1999 i was in, in working over there at sales and uh I, the, the, back then i used to pull in 120k a year in 1997 i was number one in canada <laughs> So, so, so the managers and the general managers weren't making as much as money as you. So I used to pull in with a brand new BMW 3 Series. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, so Make it more a future shop. What the hell? <laughs> Born to be in sales. Number one, everywhere you've been. Born to sell. Yeah. That's a t-shirt right there, man. Born to sell. Yeah. Actually, that's no, a, maybe not. There you go. That's insane. That's <laughs> Steve ba- so Steve Bailey, Eric owns the agency, used to another be a, agency. So here. we used to be in that. It's 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 pretty funny when when Steve and I and Kat and Paige we, we went out for lunch. We were chatting and said, "Okay, so what are you going to do?" Four years ago, we started chatting. So he was in 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 Future Shop. I was in Future Shop. We used to sell electronics together. Same years almost, or he, he was a year ahead of me, and and it, it, we we knew the guys that. We, back then and the managers and we and we have two dogs the dogs are named Bentley and it, it's two daughters and it was like match made in heaven this is right before we uh go to LA right so so it's it's pretty funny Wait, both of your dogs were named the same name yeah They're- so our, <laughs> our, 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 his is Bentley ours is Bentley too wow so, yeah so but the coincidence you drive it, but you can at least call it right <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Peter, before we wrap up, I want to know, because you've been so successful in the business, you're one of my favorite people in the business. That's why I joined. Um, Cause you can just tell genuine people, you know, you want to work with genuine people. And I just really liked you as a person more than anything. And then you sent me that cool agency video of like Maurizio looking all cool with that awesome Kanye West song. And I was like, all right, what do I sing? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but what would you, what would you recommend for people getting into the business now? What can they do today to have a successful sales business? So uh, it's uh, look at Matt. It, 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 it's not a pill that anybody needs to take, or it's not one advice I can right. tell somebody that says you, you do this and you become successful. It doesn't work that way. You, everybody needs to go through the grind, needs to go through the hustle. I know it's a repetitive, and everybody says the same thing. <laughs> But <clears throat> truly, I, if you remember our, our conversation at the beginning, I, I told you this as well. I said, I'm looking for people that have a uh, fire under the belly. Uh, because that fire under the belly, doesn't matter if you sell homes, real estate, cars, pan, whatever you're selling. If you're not passionate about that product, number one, and if you're not passionate about giving service to people, uh, you're, you're going to be terrible at it. So, that's, that's number one. Number two, um, that fire uh, that you have, the desire to become successful, to set goals, to improve your life, and to, to keep hitting the goals and improving the next year and going to the next and next and next and next and next. 
it's what differentiates good salespeople or good real estate agent from, from not so great or average. So <clears throat> number one, I think everybody needs to do a, a balance check for themselves. Do a gut check for yourself. Do you have the, why are you doing this? Why do you want to come to real estate? You know what I mean? Why, why do you, just because somebody said, oh, real estate, you sell one home, you're going to make a lot of money. It doesn't work that way. I have a 90-10 rule. I tell all of you guys, I, I said, you heard me say this before, 10% of the agents make 90% of the money. So do you want to be part of that 10% or you just want to be part of the 90%? So it's nothing wrong with that. Everybody's having a good life, being part of the 90%, making 100, 200, 300,000. It's not hard to make in our industry, but do you want to become part of that time 10%? So if you do, that takes a little bit of different angle and how you look at business. It's a business. You have to treat it like a business. I told, uh, the, I'm, I, I, I tell all my agents, I say, Really, real estate is not a rocket science. It's a very simple business to do. Uh, out of one year, nine months out of the year, we work three months, we fuck around, okay? So we are in la-la land. Uh, we're, we, you know, we, we <laughs> vacation mentally or, or, or physically doesn't matter. So, um, but you gotta be productive. You gotta make sure that you have a business in place. It's, it's you're opening the door, it's like a retail spot. You open it at certain hours, you finish at certain hours, but that's not us because we don't have a boss. Nobody tells us what to do. It becomes extremely difficult to put tasks for ourselves and accountability So uh, towards that. So, so it's great to, for new agents to understand that concept that have the burning desire and the ability to become successful, aim high, most agents I see, they go join a brokerage that their top guy makes $200,000 a year. So if you join a brokerage that your top guy makes $200,000 a year, what are you aiming for? Do you understand what I'm saying? You have yeah. to aim somewhere, right? So, uh, so th these are the things that, it, that I would recommend. Chase the dream, work it hard. And it's all, everybody says the same thing. But you really need to set plans and work your plans. That's my suggestion. Yeah, love that, and that's why I am uh, on the journey with you, Peter, because you're the man. You're you're rocking it, brother. What are you talking about? <laughs> he's killing it, by the way, Eric. This year, you know that? Yeah, he's told me. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's gonna I have. Tell him every, he's gonna have I his tell best him every year day. ever. I've heard it yeah. so many times. I feel like it's happening to me almost. Yeah, I tell him every he's day. Blown, he's blown his goals already. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so you, the next level. Eric had a terrible crypto accident yesterday, and uh, <laughs> he's he's been upset since. But after he, all this, we, we're all pumping each other up. Peter's saying you're having the best year ever. We're talking about. Well, I'm just saying. Years, and you're saying I had a bad down. crypto don't accident. Are you kidding me? Don't remind them. Don't remind them. <laughs> hey, I'm not even into crypto, so yeah, you're a step ahead yeah. of me in that regard. I so. bought the Ethereum a long time ago, and I forgot about it. So <laughs> the other day, I'm looking at oh. I remember I bought something here. So anyways, it's, it's hilarious. It's, uh, it's addicting. Oh, wow. Hey, what else? I, nothing. I think we're good. I think you uh, knocked it out of the park here, Peter. I think Thank we you. should we should ask, since you are the number one followed account oh, yes. in Canada, where can people follow you? What is your Instagram handle, Facebook, Twitter? Where do you Twitter want to direct people? Peter page. As soon as they put on Instagram, it pops up. And, uh, and that's about it. What else do you want to know? Yeah, I, yeah, I only give my, my agency. Six, by the way, our agency uh, uh, Instagram handle is different. It's not the agency Toronto. It's the agency six. Nice. Like, yeah. Like Drake says. Like Drake. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. The, six. the coolest yeah exactly. just so you know eric okay the cool awesome the coolest brokerage in the world okay. yes thank you we got it on tape from eric oh, from no. the broke agent himself i'm held We're at key point that. look at this thing <laughs> stupid joke delete that awesome love it well cool thanks so much for coming on peter really thanks, appreciate guys. it thank you I'm thanks for coming on I'll, I'll call you in uh you know probably an hour yeah, me or Pete. I was waiting to Peter. see how this interview goes before I issue your check. So you oh yes, I have a check on today. <laughs> he told me he was going to do that. I noticed yeah. it still isn't in. So uh, hopefully, it went well. Get your well. paperwork in, then maybe. <laughs> I know. You still have to submit the trade record sheet. So <laughs> right. So 
<laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Peter. <laughs> Thank you. Take it easy. Chatting with you. Bye. See ya. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. I love Peter. Yeah, he's great. So that was Peter Torkin. He is the uh, my. Uh, he's the managing partner at the office I work at, and he's a beast. He kills it, and. Um, yeah, it yeah, sounds just, like you guys have some pretty good rapport. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, it does. He's a great guy. Even a lot of agency guys on the show. <laughs> no, they're all they're all really cool. They're cool. We yeah. Like Peter, and it's awesome how he uh, built his following with the the curation genius strategy for, like you were saying, for someone who's been in the business for so long to to notice that trend early back in 2012, 13, actually watch YouTube videos. And yeah. figure out how to grow his following and now he's closing 20 million dollar deals from his instagram getting more views than we are you know <laughs> it's I mean, insane legendary it's, it's, yeah it's cool i mean a lot of people who have been in the business a long time just like i said they're content with it they work on the referrals and pretty much just referrals at that point when you've been in you know 15 plus years and yeah he just like uh jason in, in our other episode they're just not content they have a different mindset than a lot of people, right? They yeah. just always want to get to that next level. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty crazy. And yeah, 1.5 billion in career sales is uh, insane. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. And he closed a deal in Turks and Kankos because of his TikTok or because of his Instagram. His he Instagram, He literally yeah. did nothing just through a referral. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I, mean, I know that's the dream people, that's where you should get to yeah seriously i mean people stuff. people question social media if you could just you know post a picture of a shower put some music on it and then close a deal from that it's the way to go smart man yeah. right there yeah not all Insane. he does of course it's a he does a lot more on instagram but well yeah but very smart strategy yeah he's awesome he does so everyone go follow him uh you can get some definitely get some good ideas if you want to be like you know, he's still, his page is still very engaging and you want to see what comes next, but it's nothing like, you know, he's not trying to do skits or anything. Like it's things that people can execute. Pretty much anyone could execute. He's just consistent and he's, he's doing it. He's got it down to a, a bit of a science now, how he films his videos and that's all, all it is. So yeah, the speed up, slow down effect. It's crushes. solid. Yeah, you know, it's solid. Makes the video way more entertaining. Yeah. I just couldn't stop staring at this fucking bruise on my forehead right here. Were you looking yeah. at that thing? It's like a, a no. sniper is pinpointing me the entire time. No, I could not even see it. You're it's more of a you have a shadow on that side of yeah, the Yeah, I know that's purposeful. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why I put the yeah. light over here. I have no, a wedding fine. going to a wedding oh. in a couple of days and I saw a you know a premature pimple developing, so I attacked Fuck. it viciously on uh monday night during mm -hmm. one of the crypto spectro crashes. gel <laughs> oh you don't have spectro gel no, so I said some canadian glue. Gel. yeah and uh goo, goo yeah yeah so i was <laughs> viciously attacking it because i was like i gotta get this thing out and then of course i ended up creating a larger problem bruising the skin and now i'm moisturizing drying moisturizing showering putting cetaphil putting sunscreen on it doing everything i can i got about 24 hours for this thing to heal before the wedding what when's is the wedding Friday well saturday night? saturday night okay. but tomorrow's a travel day tomorrow afternoon doesn't do any any favors Not gonna help me. Travel <laughs> gonna day. do me any favors i can't look in the mirror every five seconds i can't monitor it and i'm gonna well, be seeing people tomorrow night so i nice. think maybe maybe i'm not sure but perhaps you could get some polysporin, something like that. I don't know what any of these are. I know all facial medications, and these are like witchcraft, Canadian witchcraft. No, what the hell's polysporin? Don't fucking polysporin. It's like a, it's for like small cuts and stuff, so it doesn't get infected. So whatever no, the equivalent. It's not going to get infected. I mean, no, I know. It's healing. But it heals your cuts. So what a lot of people do with like a, if they have something they want gone, mm -hmm. is they will put on this polysporin or whatever the fuck you have mm -hmm. and they put a band-aid on it overnight and it just kind of sticks on there and it stays and then boom gone in the morning yeah well i wish that was the case i just well you I haven't tried know. it so you don't know <laughs> yeah i guess you're right well anyways pray, folks, pray sorry for me, everybody sorry, sorry to drag this on yeah 
Well, Pray the wedding me. will have already been done. So hey, if you listen this far in the comments, let me know that it looked okay. You didn't notice it. Yeah. So say, uh, if you've listened this far, say, Eric, it looked okay. Yeah. Eric, okay. comma, it looked okay. Yes. Yes. Well, folks, y'all take care now.